What's up? Welcome to the Golly Wisdom Podcast. I am your host. It's your boy, Clifford Che here. And hey, I just want to say thank you for tuning in today's episode. Listen, you didn't have to. You could have went to any other podcast, but you said, you know what? Let me tune into the Golly Wisdom Podcast today. You probably saw it for the first time and you're like, what is this about? Hey, this is the Golly Wisdom Podcast. Here on this podcast, we encourage you and we teach you to apply the knowledge of God to your daily life. And I believe that how I know someone is wise is not based on all that they know. I believe that um, I can tell that you're wise based on how you can rightfully apply the things that you know into your life. So here on this podcast, we just want to encourage and draw more awareness to Christians, more Christians apply applying what they know. We don't want to sound smart. We don't want to sound wise. We actually want to be wise. We actually want to be smart, right? So that's all this podcast is about. And so check us out. Check us out. If you like it, um, subscribe and join the family. But um, y'all, the love y'all have been showing me, I mean, from the last episode on how to get rid of porn um, addiction in your life. I mean, y'all love it so much. I love the feedback and even prior videos on Instagram, on TikTok, um, on all the podcasts and platforms. If you've been showing love and support there, God bless you. I really appreciate it. And um, as you all can see or hear by today's um, um, title, today's episode, this is episode six. I really can't even believe that I'm, I've been a podcaster for six weeks. <laughs> like, y'all, I, uh, listen, as you can see by today's title, today we're talking about Christianity is not a competitive race. You are a word in progress. Christianity is not a competitive race. You're a word in progress. I didn't make a mistake. It's not. I know normally people say you're a work in progress, but I felt the need to change my title to your word in progress because I believe that the sub, your life, your, the subtitle of your life is God's word. I believe that you are a word of God being unfold. You're being unfolded. The God, like literally your life is the word of God. And and every part of your life is 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 God's spoken word just unfolded. And so today we'll talk about salvation. We'll talk about um justification. We'll talk about sanctification. We'll talk about glorification. If you've never heard some of these before, is okay. That is why I'm here. Um I it was I was once in a season of my life where I didn't know about these. I heard about them but I didn't really understand what it meant to the believer. And I believe that if you have an understanding of what these things mean, your life will never be the same. Okay. So before we even continue, I want you guys to know that you can send in a voice message um, so that I can answer your questions or I can even make videos about things that you guys um, like to um, hear or things that you would like for me to talk about. Um, And if you do send it, please use the description in the show notes in the description box. Um, Please do that. And if you send in a voice note, I'm able to bring you live into the episode. Like it will sound something like this. I recorded a a test one so that you guys get a a better understanding of what I'm trying to I'm trying to say so um let's play it so obviously this is a test but hi clifford i have a question today's question that i have is that how can i develop my relationship with god please if you can do an episode about this um i really really appreciate it thank you for all that you do blah 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 Bye. Bye, Clifford Che. You're welcome. So basically, after that, I'm able to answer your question and go all into that. I think that's cool. I mean, like, it doesn't get any better than that. So please, guys, I want to hear you all. I want to I want this to be a community. I don't want to just talk at you. I want to make videos that you need. Amen. Amen. So um, as you all know, this is season one of the Godly Wisdom Podcast. Here on season one, I've been very strategic about the videos that I've been making, I've been making from, from, from the very beginning. Um, this season is focused on developing your personal life. And so here on season one, you haven't seen me make any videos about other relationships with other people. Um, because I believe that before you um, develop a relationship with others, you must learn how to develop a relationship with yourself. And you cannot develop a relationship with yourself if you don't know or or have a relationship with God, because God is the ultimate foundation of who you are. And so um, season one is all about um, developing a relationship with God and developing a relationship with yourself. And so every video I've made so far and every video that I'll make in season one is, is to help you develop in your life with God in your life by yourself. Because I realized that no matter how much, how much people show you love, if you yourself don't love yourself, the love of other people will never be enough. And so that is a subject for another day that might even come in season two. Um, and so, um, like I said, you've seen the title of today's episode. Today, we're talking about Christianity is not a competitive race. You are a word in 
progress. Now, I chose this topic because um, I, I believe that how effective you can be in your walk with God is determined by the understanding you have about your salvation. Um, and so because a lot of people don't really understand um, or have a lot of understanding of, of, of their walk or salvation or justification or sanctification or glorification, all the shin, 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 um, because a lot of people don't have a lot of understanding on that, um, they begin to feel like they're behind or they feel like they're not a good Christian and all that stuff. And today I, I, I'm i doing this podcast for the believer that is listening to me that feels like um, they're trying to live a life. Um, that is holy, a life that is pure. But the more you try, um, it feels like you fail a lot. And the more you try to please God, it feels like um, it's not working. And you may feel like you're not a good Christian. I came to encourage you that you are. And, and God sees you from the perspective of Jesus Christ. And so please don't beat yourself down for it. Um, there are other people who feel like they're not good Christians um, because of their process. Know that Christianity is full of process. Christianity is not a destination that you reach. Christianity is, is a journey that you walk. And so um, keep walking. Don't compare yourself with yourself. The Bible said that he who compares himself with himself is a fool. Don't compare yourself with, with yourself. Don't let comparison win this race. Um, don't compare yourself with others. Don't compare yourself. Don't let the pressures of the word even um, frustrate you or even the pressures of the church. Um, some people feel like they're not good Christians because of the pressure the body of Christ plays on them. And so um, that's why I'm making this video. But before we even start, I believe that it's best that we get understanding. And what better way to get understanding than to start with the Proverbs of the day as is our custom of this podcast. So the proverb of the day is my pastor's um, favorite Bible verse growing up. Um, pastor Joe Asma, shout outs to you for Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. And I'll read in the New King James Version and the Message Version. The New King James says that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding in all your ways, not some, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. Now, let me read in a message. Message said, trust God from the bottom of your heart. If you're going to walk this walk of faith effectively, you must learn to trust God from the bottom of your heart. That means every part of your being must be totally depending on him. It says, don't try to figure out everything on your own. Christianity is a journey of freedom, yes, but... Trying to do it by yourself will end you in destruction. So the scripture literally said, don't try to figure it out on your own. Let the Holy Spirit be your helper. Let the community be your helper. Let the church be your helper. And I know this is a generation where we feel like we don't need community. We feel like we don't need fellowship. We feel like we don't need church um, because of church hurt or because of other things um, that other people may have done, but please don't try to do this on your own. It says, listen for God's voice in everything you do. If God did not tell you to do it, don't do it. Don't move until God literally say, daughter, son, move. Don't do this on your own. Every time you go on your own, you have to sustain the journey. And I promise you, you don't have all it takes as a child of God to sustain a journey of life, the journey of Christianity by yourself. You need something greater, and that is the grace of God. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. I came to let somebody know that in this journey of Christianity, um, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what you even say to yourself. God is the only one who can keep you on track. God is the only one who can keep you on track. So please depend on him. It says, don't assume that you know it all. The very moment you become full of pride and you begin to think you know it all, I have news for you. You're not going to make it. It says, run to God, run from evil. And I love this. When you have time, please go into Proverbs 3 and read the whole chapter. Now, before we get started, I, I think it's best that um, we get some biblical understanding by knowing what salvation is, what justification is, what sanctification is, and what glorification is. I want to give you understanding because um, I believe that 
If you have knowledge, you can't perish. The Bible said, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. So one of the greatest ways to stay effective is to get knowledge. So let's first look at salvation. Because for you to feel like your Christian journey is a race, it's a competitive race, it is a sign that you don't have an understanding of what salvation means. And salvation is deliverance from danger or suffering. Please write this down. Salvation is deliverance from danger or suffering. Salvation means to save. It means to protect. The word salvation carries literally the idea of victory. When you have salvation, you you have victory. You, you, you're healthy. It means preservation, right? Sometimes the Bible literally uses the word um, um, saved or, or, or salvation um, to, to refer to a physical deliverance. When you look at Paul's life, Paul was delivered from prison, right? And so salvation, simply we can describe salvation as being delivered from chains, being delivered from prison. There are things that kept you bound before you gave your life to Christ. And when you give your life to Christ and he delivers you from that salvation, um, from that prison, excuse me, from those chains, from those bondage, from those addictions, that is salvation. So how does God save God has rescued us. Salvation comes to us through Jesus Christ. Simple. It literally comes to us through Jesus Christ. When you read the book of John chapter 3, verse 17, it says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So there's no better way to get saved than through Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, there's no other way to get saved than through Jesus Christ. It was Jesus' death literally on the cross and his resurrection that achieved our salvation. So without Jesus Christ coming, Jesus Christ dying, Jesus Christ resurrecting, there's no salvation. And by the way, I want to say this, that you can't do anything to earn salvation. Salvation is literally a gift from God. There's nothing you can do To earn salvation. It is a gracious gift. It is an undeserved gift as Ephesians 2, 5 and even 8 puts it. And it's only available through faith in Jesus Christ. When you read the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 12, let's see what it says there. It says that, and there is salvation in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Salvation is not in anybody else. You can't save yourself. You need Jesus Christ. So it is best that you understand that is what salvation is. But it's also important that you understand that salvation is in three folds. We're saved, we're being saved, and we shall be saved. When you give your life to Christ, you're literally saved. Your spirit is saved. The second dimension of salvation is we're being saved. That is your soul. Your soul consists of your emotions, your mind, and your will. Your will, your emotions, your mind is being saved. That is why we have to be transformed by the renewing of of our minds. And the third aspect of it is that we shall be saved. That is the end. That is when justification comes in, right? Um, That is when, um, 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 sorry, not justification, but that is when um, glorification comes in. Now, um, I think it's best that we bring down these three dimensions of um, salvation. So we're saved, we're being saved, and we shall be saved. Let's break it down. The first dimension of, of our salvation is we're saved, right? That is justification. To be justified or justification is simply God's act of mercy on your behalf. And mercy simply means to be exempted from judgment by the ultimate judge who is God. Mercy is saying that you literally shot somebody. Imagine you shot somebody. And we all know when you shoot somebody, you're about to do life in prison. And you're going into prison and you're in a courtroom. And everybody is in a courtroom ready for the judge to declare life of in prison for you because you shot somebody or you killed somebody. And the judge walks into the courtroom and say, go, you're free. I mean, Think about people's reaction. Why would you set him free? He just killed this person. He just killed that person. 
He's supposed to be put in jail for a lifetime, prison for a lifetime. And a judge comes in and said, I declare you free. All your charges have been dropped. That is justification. That is the same thing Jesus Christ did with us. So literally, when one person received justification, I, I can simply put it this way that to justify is to declare you righteous. When, when you're justified, Jesus Christ comes in and declared you righteous. So justification is only an act of God, whereby he pronounces a sinner to be righteous because of that sinner's faith in Christ. You must have faith in him. You must believe in Christ that you're justified. That is simple. I know a lot of you are probably like, oh my God, that's what it meant. That's what that big word meant. That's what it meant. Now let's talk about sanctification. Sanctification is God's will for us, period. I'm going to explain better. But when you look at the, the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3, it says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. It says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification. In other words, your sanctification is the will of God. The word sanctification is literally related to the word saint. So when you hear a lot of people saying saint, 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 it literally means the one who is set apart. To, to sanctify means to set something apart for a special use. To sanctify a person is to make him holy. So you are made holy by the finished work of the cross. Not even by your actions. Because of Jesus Christ, God sees you as holy. But there are two dimensions of sanctification. That is what I call positional sanctification and progressive sanctification. When you understand these two, your walk with Christ will not be full of shame and guilt. Now, positional sanctification is based on the finished work of the cross. We are set free from every sin. When you have time, check out the book of Acts chapter 13, verses 39. Positional sanctification is, hey, because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, I will forever be holy. Now, progressive sanctification is what the body of Christ don't like to talk about. Progressive sanctification is the act of obedience to the word of God in one's life. It's, it is the same as, as growing in the Lord. We can use that, right? So when you look at the book of um, um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 18, it says that, but grow in the grace and, and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. To him be the glory both now and the day of eternity. So when you grow in your knowledge of God, when you grow, when you're maturing, spiritual maturity, that is sanctification. So God started the work of making us like Christ. Now he's continue, continuing that work, but it is still our responsibility to work with him. So that type of sanctification is to literally be pursued by every believer. Like you must pursue to walk in sanctification. First Peter chapter one, verses 15. I'm giving you scriptures. So please write them down. First Peter 1 15, it says, but, but as he who who called you is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. Because God is holy, you must desire to live a holy life. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 says that, Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. If you, even though you have been positionally sanctified, even though you have been positionally saved, it is up to you to also do the works to maintain in the faith. Why? Because God wants to use you as a vessel to also bless other people. And you cannot walk in sanctification if you don't read the word of God. So John chapter 17 verse 17 said that, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. The greatest way to be sanctified is to read the word of God. You need the Bible to walk through your journey of Christianity and to walk through the sanctification process of your life. You cannot be sanctified without the word of God. The word of God literally takes you and washes you. So you must do your part. You must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We're not saying that positionally you're not saved. We're not saying that positionally um, um, you're not holy. 
but you must also understand that sanctification is a process. Y'all, I know this sounds like I'm just throwing information at you. Today, I may not give you 50 points, but I believe that liberation comes from knowledge. And our generation don't only need messages that will make ourselves feel good, or our feelings feel good, or our flesh feel good. Sometimes you need some of some 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 episodes like this, whereby we we just sit down and learn something new. So sanctification is simply you acknowledging that the blood of Jesus Christ um, made you holy, and by choosing to be practical about following God, to look like Christ in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. Yes, God has saved you. Yes, you're holy. Yes, 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 all that. Through the word, work of Christ, Christ, there's nothing you can do to, to, to be more holy. But you have to work out your own salvation with your dream. The reason that, that, that is is because when you were out there in the world, before you got saved, you spent years of your life literally um, learning something new. So your soul was fed something different. Your mind was fed something different. Your emotions was fed something different. Your will was fed something different. You were more emotional out there. You, you use your emotions to determine your life. Your mind was filled with negative thoughts. Your will, you made decisions based on your flesh, based on however you wanted to make it. But when you get saved, that soul has to go through that process. Your mind has to go through that process. That's why the Bible said to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to take time to go through that process in your mind. Your emotion have to go through it. So that is why you can be saved, but you're still struggling. It's not because God is not with you. It's not because your salvation is not valid. It's simply because you're in a process. So I want to encourage somebody today. Don't talk yourself down. You're still in the process. It may not feel like it. You may not like it. But please hear me that you're still in the process. So walk through that process. Please walk through it. Because many times we get discouraged and we fall back and fall more into sin because of the fact that we thought everything was going to be smooth. It is okay to go through the process as a Christian. It is okay not to have everything figured out. You're literally in sanctification process. You may fall today, but please get back up. You may fall today, but it doesn't determine who you are. There's greater inside of you. And when God sees you, he does not see your sin. He sees Jesus Christ. And so take confidence in who Christ is and what he did on the cross for you and keep walking. Now, let's look at glorification. We've talked about sanctification. Let's look at glorification. Glorification is the final result, the final aspect of salvation. We shall be saved. Glorification is God's final removal of sin from the life of the saint, from the life of the believer. Everyone who was who who was saved shall be saved in the eternal state, right? So when you read the book of um, Romans chapter 8, verses 18, literally it says that, for I consider the things, for, for I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. There is eternity that we must be aware of. So when God comes back, when the final return of Jesus Christ comes, all of us who are saved, who died, shall be saved. We shall resurrect and be with our Father. That is the good news of the faith. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17, so you get a better understanding. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says that, For the light momentarily, affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. There is an eternal light waiting for us. And so salvation is in threefold. We're saved, we're being saved, and we shall be saved. And under that, like I said, 
you can understand it from the point of obviously the salvation, the first aspect of it, where you're you're justified. And the second aspect of it was your sanctification. And the third one is your glorification. Now, I shared all these things with you to encourage you that your chance of making heaven is pretty huge. And so don't feel this courage. Don't feel this courage that because you messed up today, you're not a good Christian. God understands that you're in a process. Your life is a word in progress. You're a word unfolding every day. And so you may have messed up, but it doesn't dictate your position in God. It doesn't dictate your position in the faith. I know other people in the world will tell you, or even in the church will tell you, if you did that, it make you less of a Christian. No, don't just don't dwell there. Your identity is determined by Christ and not by your decisions. I know that is huge. Um, we're not to abuse grace, of course. God has given us grace but we don't want to abuse it. But I want to just pause to let you know that you can do it. For the one that feels like <sighs> they're behind, they're not growing, they don't even know what to do, you can do it. Let me give you some three simple tips to keep you going and focus in your walk with God. And all of those tips is under one big umbrella that if you want to Stay focused and not compare yourself um, and not compete with other people in this journey of Christianity. It's under one umbrella, love. So point number one, love God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. Love God with all your mind, your heart, and your soul. Do everything in your relationship with God from the place of love and not the law. Don't let the law dictate how you live your life. Even if it is the law, which is the word of God, let the love of God and your love for his law be what drives your actions for God. Let the love of God and the love for his law be what drives your actions and drives your actions for God. Literally. Things that are literally so hard becomes very easy to follow when you let love lead you on in your walk with God. When love leads you, when the love of God leads you to be a Christian, Things that you find it so hard to quit becomes very easy because you're not looking at it as this crazy command. You're doing it out of your love for God. The Bible said in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, 36 to 38, it says that, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, Jesus Christ answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. You see, that is the first and greatest commandment. So please, point number one, love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Number two, if you want to keep going, if you want to stay focused in your walk with God and not compare yourself with other people, love your neighbors. I know you're probably looking like, Clifford, what does loving other people have to do with my relationship with God and what I'm struggling with and how I'm trying to be better? God truly love his people. One thing I've discovered walking with God is that he loved his people. So if you want to strengthen your relationship with God, make sure you create good relationship with your neighbors and other people. You cannot build a healthy relationship with God if you hate and hurt God's children. It is very impossible. So do good to them. Do good to other people. Help other people. Maintain a unified relationship with other people. The book of Matthew chapter 22 verses 39 says that, 
and second is like it. So it continue loving God with all your heart and it continue and says that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Their dimension of forgiveness you would never be able to attain if you don't love other people. A lot of y'all don't understand why you still feel guilt and shame. It's, it's, it's really because you haven't been forgiven. And the reason why you haven't been forgiven is because you're refusing to show love to God's people by forgiving them also. You want forgiveness, but you don't want to forgive other people. It doesn't work that way as a child of God. Literally, the Bible literally says that if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 15, you can pray all you want. But if you do not forgive other people, God will forgive you. So I want to encourage you. Maybe somebody didn't tell you. Maybe you never heard this before. But today I want to be the person to tell you. Forgive other people. That is point number two. And point number three. Know God. Period. Know God for yourself. Period. <sighs> If you don't want to feel like this walk of Christianity is a competitive race, know God for yourself. Know that Christianity is a race. I know there are people who say Christianity is not a race. Christianity, No, Christianity is a race. It's not a competitive race, but it's a race. So don't compare your journey with anyone else. Please don't compare your journey with anyone else. Just look to God who is literally the author. Just literally, please just look to God who's the author and a finisher of your faith. You can't be full of joy. You can't be appreciative of your walk as a child of God if you keep comparing yourself with other people. So I know it may be hard at times, but fight the good fight. Finish the race and keep the faith. Don't let nobody or nothing move you out of your relationship with God. And if you do that, your life will never be the same. I want to pray for somebody listening to me. You're saying, man. After hearing this, I feel like I can do this. So I want to give my life to Christ or maybe I want to rededicate my life to Christ. Please repeat after me. Wherever you are, just close your eyes and say, Dear Lord, I thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for even sending your son, Jesus Christ, to come into this earth, to walk the earth, to live, to die, and to resurrect for my sins. Today, I believe and I accept that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I believe that he died for my sins so that I can have a better life. Dear Lord, come into my life and transform my life from inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. And just like that, if you pray the prayer, listen, your life will never be the same. I declare that God will supernaturally empower you to walk this walk. For some reason, this podcast is ending and I'm very emotional because there are a lot of people out there who feel like they can't do it, who feel like ashamed because when they look at how the Christians are supposed to live, they feel like they don't measure up. But hey, to the one listening to me, you could do it. You're right where God needs you to be and you may not be where you want to be but you're sure not where you used to be. You're in a process. So keep walking with God. It's a day at a time. It's a day at a time. So thank you all for tuning in today's episode. Today I've even gone up past my time. Normally I, I make sure that I keep it at 25 minutes, but I've gone past my time. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you. Um, rate this podcast, subscribe on all podcasting platforms on YouTube as well. And um, I can't wait to see you next week for episode seven is going to be good and you don't want to miss it episode seven we're going to be talking so i love you all remember that that's where bridging the gap it is still our season of order and lastly don't forget to be blessed be yourself and be happy peace